Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about DSG models or Dynamic Stochastic General Equilibrium models. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the problem. I'm going to turn it into a value function problem. And then we are going to do an example of an intratemporal first order condition from a DSG model. There are many other ways we could take first order conditions in such a model. So comment below if there is a specific first order condition that you would like to see. Here is the problem we are going to work with today. Our utility is an expected value of the infinite future period utilities, where we have those future periods discounted by beta. We have consumption in CRRA form. We have real money demand, MT over PT in CRA form. We have labor in CRRA form, where it is with a negative sign because we get disutility from working. We don't like labor if there's a negative sign out in front. The budget constraint for this problem has a lot going on, so let's spend some time to think about it a little more carefully. What we are saying is that tomorrow's assets are the amount of money that I have in my wallet today, and then some money that I have in the bank times interest. What was in my bank account is the assets that I had at the end of the day yesterday, plus the amount I earned from working, WTLT, minus the amount I spent on food, PTCT, minus the money that I took out of my bank account to put into my wallet. So let's value functionalize this problem. So a value function is going to turn that long infinite problem into today and tomorrow. So the today part is the consumption, the real money demand, and the labor today. The tomorrow part is beta the, times the expected value of the value function tomorrow, and the budget constraint doesn't change. Now let's think about an example of an intratemporal first order condition. Maybe we'll do something where how does real money demand relate to consumption in any given period. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take the first order condition for consumption and real money demand in a given period. We're going to set both equal to dv of at plus 1 dat plus 1 because we're going to see that comes up in both equations. We're going to use that to solve this first order condition and find that relationship. So here's the first order condition for consumption. All I'm going to do is take dv dct, which is equal to 0 by the envelope theorem. That's going to be equal to du dct, or today's marginal utility with respect to consumption plus beta times the expected value of dv dat plus 1 times dat plus 1 dct. So I'm sort of doing a chain rule here. We can look at this budget constraint and see that dat plus 1 dct is negative pt times 1 plus it. If we go back up here, we can see that indeed that is the case. And we are going to use the fact that that's equal to 0 to rearrange this equation a little bit and get to the fact that this is how CT relates to beta ET dV dAT plus 1. Now we're going to do something very similar for real money demand. So here is a very similar process where I'm taking dV dM over PT, which again is equal to 0 by the envelope theorem. I'm still using that chain rule. It's a little trickier to see why dAT plus 1 dM over PT is equal to negative IT times PT. So I encourage you to take a look at that budget constraint, see if you can back out how to get there. If you still can't, comment below, and I will put that in a future video. Now, again, we are going to use the fact that it's equal to 0 to solve that equation right here in terms of beta ET dV dAT plus 1. I've rewritten the first order condition for consumption. You can see that both of those are equal to beta times the expected value of dV dAT plus 1. So we can set those equal to zero. We can do some algebra. We can see that my money demand today should be equal at the equilibrium, at the optimum, to CT to the theta over V times the interest rate over 1 plus the interest rate to the negative 1 over V, and we are done. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of an overview of a DSG model and how to take an intratemporal first order condition. If it made sense or it was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.